This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G. Yet another entry into the MyTouch line from T-Mobile. This is what you could call a super phone. It has a large 4-inch 800 by 480 display, a 1 gigahertz second generation Qualcomm CPU, and front and rear facing cameras. And of course, given the name, you know that it has 4G in the form of HSDPA+, which is available in quite a few markets already from T-Mobile. Take a look around the phone. It's bigger than the older MyTouches, which were very compact phones, because it has a larger, more high-resolution display. These are mechanical buttons here. You've got the standard Google Home, the menu button, the back button. Instead of a search button, you have the Genius button, which goes with the MyTouch line of phones and their HTC MySense software, which is sort of like HTC Sense for beginners. It has a, a bunch of pre-configured widgets and stuff that it'll put on the phone when you first boot it up. It asks you what you're into, social networking or email, that kind of thing. You can go ahead and customize it afterwards to get rid of those. And it gives you a starter video. While we're talking about it, I'll just show you. And you see these icons here are customized with my sense with the square backgrounds and a colored palette. But getting back to the hardware, you can see it's a fairly good sized phone. It weighs about 5 ounces. It feels good and strong and hefty in hand. It's not as plasticky as uh, the older MyTouch phones are. Here from the side, you can still have that, a little bit of that signature HTC chin on the device. It's fairly slim, though it's not as skinny quite as the Samsung Vibrant, also on T-Mobile, another super phone. We've got volume buttons here. These are kind of easy to push by accident. In fact, the power button's up here, and when I was turning on the phone, I was holding it like that, and my fingers pressed the volume rockers both up and down while hitting power, and that puts the phone into bootloader mode, which for you people who are not too geeky would probably be scary, but you can just turn it off and turn it on again, and be careful not to press those side buttons to avoid that problem. Micro USB port is standard. You can see we have the plum colored one here. This is available in four different colors. It's a metal back with a pattern on it. It's quite nice. Arts came with a scratch on the back, which is interesting. We haven't been able to scratch it, so maybe that's just a fluke. Here's your rear 5 megapixel camera, LED flash, speaker. If you want to see what's underneath the battery door, I'll just give that a yank off. And there's your battery, 1400 milliamp, SIM card slot, and 8 gig micro SD card pre installed in the micro SD card slot. On this side over here, we have the camera button, acts as the shutter button, and also launches the camera application. 3.5 millimeter jack right up here, and again, that's the power button. So that's a look at the hardware, and we'll compare it to the Samsung Vibrant, which is the same price, $199 with contract, also a very high-end phone. The Vibrant is running Android 2.1, whereas this has 2.2. Of course, 2.2 will come to the Vibrant as well. So you can see they're similar in size. This guy's a little bit more square, a little skinnier, and a little bit slipperier, and definitely lighter. And soon we'll have the Motorola Defy available on T-Mobile. We'll take a look at that as well. This guy is supposed to be ruggedized, but honestly, the MyTouch feels the most weighty, beefy, and strong. I think it could definitely smack down this rugged Defy, and it certainly could make mincemeat of the, the Vibrant. So this has all your standard Google applications on here, plus the MySense software, some of which is similar to HTC Sense, found on the, some of HTC's other phones, but not the G2, which we reviewed recently. That one is just totally vanilla Android 2.2 Froyo. And we'll be doing another comparison video comparing this to the G2 if you're having trouble deciding between these two high-end HTC handsets on T-Mobile. Obviously the biggest difference is this does not have a hardware keyboard. Well, the G2 does. Both of them do have 4G HSDPA. So here you have your standard Google search with voice search built in. The Genius button is hardwired to voice command. This is Nuance Command's drag and dictation software, so you can hit it and let's see what happens. You call someone, send a text or email, and you can say send to Joe Blow, and it will address the text to the Joe Blow. Search the web, find a business. Other HTC custom software here, we have their friend stream widget, which you're familiar with if you use another HTC phone on, with Android, and this can aggregate your Twitter and your uh, Facebook status updates here, and of course you can enter a status update. We've got the wireless controls built in over here. 
the mail widget, which is quite nice. We have not configured a mail account, obviously, but you would see a listing of mail that had come in. And HTC has also added this little custom thing here, which is sort of like the concept of the, remember the T-Mobile MyFave service that they no longer offer? You can put your favorite people here, and it's just a kind of, gee whiz bang, it looks cute kind of thing. So if you want to call John, the upside down cat, you can, or add other activities. T-Mobile has added quick video chat here. Unfortunately, that's not going to be ready until November 3rd when the phone launches, so we haven't been able to test it, but that makes use of the front-facing video conferencing camera for video calls. And here we have Android 2.2 and the standard applications, along with some stuff that HTC and T-Mobile have added. You can see the phone's quite fast for doing things like scrolling through here. And you've got all the standard Google stuff that they usually add on, Amazon MP3, of course, Gmail, Google Talk. The YouTube player and uh, T-Mobile has added on Quick Office reviewing Office documents, and they have Wi-Fi calling. Yay! This this is an update that should be coming to the G2 soon to add Wi-Fi calling and Wi-Fi hotspots. Now, Wi-Fi calling is not the same thing as UMA calling, where it, it works in conjunction with the cellular network and hands over calls. If you make a call while you're on a Wi-Fi network and you walk out of range of the Wi-Fi hotspot or access point, you will drop the call. So there's no handoff back and forth. Nonetheless, if, if you happen to live in a place with a signal challenges, this is a way to be able to use your phone to make phone calls even if you can't get a T-Mobile signal. And the Wi-Fi hotspot is very exciting. Right now, T-Mobile is not charging. We hear that they will. We haven't confirmed that for ourselves yet. To use this as a portable Wi-Fi hotspot, similar to what you can do with uh, select Sprint phones and Verizon phones, so once you enable that, this becomes a high-speed wireless modem. Particularly attractive because T-Mobile does have good 3G and often 4G speeds these days in the form of HSDPA+. Now the interesting thing is though this has HSDPA+, and we're actually in an area that has that service and has good quality HSDPA+. I'm finding that my Samsung vibrates a little bit faster when I use it as a wireless modem with a hotspot feature. T-Mobile of course doesn't offer that. I have hacked my vibrant to do that. but. Funny thing that both the G2 and this guy, both built as 4G by T-Mobile, aren't quite as fast for tethering. For download speeds, I've been getting about 2.5 megs down on HSDPA+, and on the G2, I was seeing more like 8. I'm assuming this might be a network fluctuation, but I'm seeing about 5 megs down on the Vibrant, which is supposed to be just straight HSDPA. So I'm not sure if this guy is a little bit slower for the networking. Speeds on the phone are great, and even downloading large applications is wonderful. Reception is middle of the road, kind of like the G2. This is not a stellar reception phone, nor is it horrible. Um, it's, a, it's just a hair weaker than my Vibrant after the recent firmware update that came out for the Vibrant that did improve signal strength. Let's take a look at some of the applications that T-Mobile has put on here. Of course, there's the T-Mobile app pack if you want it. There's a demo of Asphalt 5, which we'll take a look at in a minute. It's a racing game that can show up the 3D capabilities of the phone because this does have a GPU and a fast 1 gigahertz CPU. We have some other applications on here including Monopoly, some other games that they put on here, and Moby TV which is rebranded as T-Mobile TV. Now Moby TV has really grown up. It's quite an impressive service. There's on-demand content which is really the most desirable thing and there's some live TV as well. We're running on a trial. It's $10 a month. You get 30 days free to start with. And Here you can see the user interface for the opening screen where you can look at a lot of the things that are available and you can do a channel selector down here so there really is a lot of content we'll take a look at something really tacky like Real Housewives and you get full episodes on here and it does run in full screen once it gets going and we're doing this over T-Mobile's data network So that's looking really good. Not bad for $10 a month. There is a lot of content and a lot of the major channels are on here. The speakerphone, you can hear just like with the G2, it could be louder and clearer. This is set to maximum volume right now. Part of the problem is the speaker is firing out the back. So if you don't have something like we do, a board or a desk behind it, if you put your hand behind the speaker, it'll actually reflect the sound back at you. Or, of course, you can use a headset with it.
Other content in here includes the usual YouTube player. We'll take a look at that. And we will just pick something from the front page that doesn't look too stupid. So right now, this is actually the standard quality. It's looking pretty sharp and filling most of the screen. That's really better than usual for YouTube mobile. I will switch to high quality. It's about the best I have ever seen mobile YouTube. Or an Android phone. Next, we're going to take a look at the web browser, which is the usual Android WebKit web browser, which supports multi touch pinch zoom. And you can see this is a fast CPU with a video acceleration, so. And we're actually on the YouTube site right now, which is quite a heavy site, so that, that's a, uh, an accomplishment. Watching Flash videos, a little jerky and spastic, however if you want to watch them in native flash format. Accelerometer? Yes. Proximity sensor? You bet. And ambient light sensor as well, and the browser. Now if you want to see what the keyboard looks like, I'll put it back in landscape mode so you can see the big keyboard. This is the usual customized HTC keyboard that we like so well, where you can press and hold to get the alternate key. You don't have to keep switching between keyboard modes. And it also comes, as you can see, with swipe pre-installed. Keyboard entry is quite good given the large display, it's 4 inches, high resolution, and these keys are nice and big. Now let's take a look at the contacts to see how HTC has enhanced them. You've got your own custom look here, and of course if you've got a photo caller ID here, it will show up listed with that. And that's what the contacts looks like, it's a very nice job. And here's your calendar view. Tap on a day to see it. You see the phone's really quick. Too. If you want to add an event, that's what it looks like. Repetition, reminders, all the usual good stuff. Now let's take a look at Asphalt 5, 3D racing game. And we will play the demo. I'll turn the screen down. A cinematic. Three, two, one, go. And this uses the accelerometer. That plays really smooth, looks good. Given the lack of good 3D games on Android, it's nice to see this. So that's Asphalt 5, that's bundled in the demo mode with the game.
like every phone these days, this has a GPS and a very sensitive compass as well. This comes with Google Maps, Google Navigation, Google Latitude, and Google Places. It is not shipping with Telnav, at least right now. Maybe after launch date, we'll see that. And here we are, and you can see how quickly you can go through here. It gets it fixed pretty well. We had no problems with the GPS, behaving very well. Pinch and zoom, very fast. And of course this has street view too. And when you're using this for navigation, it gives you spoken turn by turn directions. When you arrive at your destination, it gives you a street view on screen, which is really very useful and very cool. Take a look at street view real quick on this. Very fast, nice and fluid. And you can pinch and zoom too. And 360 panorama. There's our street view in Google Maps. So that's a T-Mobile MyTouch 4G made by HTC. It's the latest in the MyTouch line and the most high-end of the MyTouches. Typically they've been kind of mid to mid, slightly high-end devices at best. And this one is certainly top drawer with a 4-inch 800x480 capacitive multi-touch display, 1 gigahertz CPU. HSDPA Plus, billed as 4G by T-Mobile with very good data speeds. The usual GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all the goodies. Rear 5 megapixel camera that's better than average for HDC. Front facing camera for quick video chat. It's going to be $199 on sale November 3rd at T-Mobile stores. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.